This is the Proton Guru video practice for topic 3.7. These problems will give you practice on oxymercuration, demercuration of alkenes, and incorporating those reactions in with all the other ones we've covered so far in our practice videos. Some brief and straightforward reading that can get you ready for these problems can be found in the Organic Chemistry 1 Primer 2018. You can also find additional chemistry videos and information on how you can match the videos and practice up with your particular course's textbook at protonguru.com. We're first asked to provide the major product of this reaction, so we look at it and see if we can figure out what kind of reaction it is. Well, when you see the mercury salt, and mercury is this Hg, you should recognize right away it's the oxymercuration demercuration. We only use this reaction of alkenes to do the Markovnikov addition of alcohols, which means you add an OH to the more substituted and an H to the less substituted carbon, and it's a mix of sin and anti-addition. So here that's relatively straightforward. You can, on your scratch paper, just kind of scribble out the double bond, say the OH is going to go in the more substituted, the H is going to go in the less substituted. And then you can check for the stereochemistry. You say, well, this side of the ring and this side of the ring are both identical, so this is not a chiral center. I didn't generate any chiral centers at all. I just have an achiral product. One of the challenges is going to be keeping in your mind all the different types of reaction conditions that you've learned as we learn more and more alkene reactions. So we're going to try to give you some practice on that. Here I just show this oxymercuration reaction we just saw, and then in a previous video we saw the hydration reaction. So here's kind of the thought process. As soon as you see the mercury salt, you say all I'm going to do is do Markovnikov addition of OH and H, and there's no specificity with how those things point. You can even then just scribble out the double bond and say the OH is on the more substituted, the H is on the less substituted, and you can see that this is going to generate a chiral center here. So kind of scribbling on your scratch paper, then you can stick this down as your product. You say, well, I already figured out there's going to be a chiral center there, and when I start with an achiral starting material and get a chiral center generated, I need to have a racemic mixture as the product. Now for the second reaction, when you see a strong acid, sulfuric acid in this case, Whenever you see that strong acid of the alkene, you say, I'm going to do electrophilic addition. So you say, okay, I'm going to add H plus to this. One side's going to become a carbocation. Always choose the more substituted side to start. So you know in your head you're going to get this secondary carbocation. Anytime I have a carbocation that I've generated, I've got to look for carbocation rearrangement. So it's pretty easy. You have the carbocation on a secondary site. You only have to check right beside it. So it's primary here, tertiary here. So, okay, it's going to have to move to the tertiary site. If there's a hydrogen, I choose to move the hydrogen. Only if I have no choice would I move a alkyl group. So I've moved the positive charge to the tertiary site. Only then am I ready to do coordination of the nucleophile. Here, our nucleophile is water, and when you have water acting as a nucleophile, it loses one of its H's as it adds, and you get a OH added. Here it's achiral because this carbon has two substituents that are the same. Right away, you know it's achiral. And you can see why we now have two ways to make alcohols that lead to Markovnikov addition. If there's a carbocation rearrangement, you'll get a different product from the oxymercuration demercuration, which does not involve a carbocation. What if we mix our new reactions that we've just learned in this lesson with some of the old reactions, and we're asked to provide the major product for each reaction shown? You really have to start to sort all these things out, and flashcards are a good way to do that. Maybe some of the practice quizzes on the protonguru.com website. And when you're doing addition reactions to alkenes, there are a few things you want to look out for. First, do I know what two things add? You're going to add one thing to each of the carbons there. Is there a carbocation that could rearrange? And a helpful hint is that only happens when there's a strong acid to generate a carbocation, so only those reactions have the strong acid. Sin, anti, or mixed addition. That has to do with what way the different species will point with respect to each other once you add them. Helpful hint for the anti. Anti-addition will only take place when there's a halogen. Those are the only reactions you learn in a general second year sophomore organic chemistry type course. So those two are the ones with anti-addition, so you're looking for a halogen. Then you're looking for, well, I know what two things add, but say I have a reaction where I add an H and an OH. Do I add the OH to the more substituted, that would be Markovnikov, or do I add the OH to the less substituted? Well, so far we've only learned Markovnikov reactions, so in the next couple sets we'll see some different reactions that might not lead to Markovnikov addition. So a really helpful exercise if you're practicing for a course or something is to pause the video and try to figure out, do I know all these bits of information for these five reactions? Well, let's start here. What two things add? Well, we add a bromine and a bromine, and those reactions that have the halogen 
are the ones that lead to anti-addition. Nothing can rearrange that type of reaction, so it's relatively straightforward. You add the bromine here and here. They point off the directions. Well, here one of these carbons to which the bromine added is a chiral center, so we should get a racemic mixture there, as indicated by that squiggly line. Well, let's go to the next reaction. We have a strong acid. Say, so, okay, the strong acid will supply the H as an H+, plus, and then the water will supply the OH. When you add the H+, plus, it's electrophilic addition. You make a carbocation. So on your scratch paper, you'd say, okay, my H plus adds to this side, so my positive charge ends up here. You've got to look for carbocation rearrangement before I add the OH group. You'd say, well, if I've got a positive charge here on a secondary carbon, one of these methyl groups will move over here, and that will give me this tertiary carbocation. Only then will I be able to add the OH to the other site. So my product should look like this, but with the OH added here. So if you draw in your product a little bit more neatly, it looks like this. I check it for stereochemistry at the end. No chiral centers in this whole molecule, so I don't need to designate any stereochemistry. How about these reaction conditions going around the circle here? Well, you're going to add a bromine. It's a halogen, so that always happens when you have a halogen. This example is different from this example because remember, from the 3.6 practice video, we looked at halogenation and this other thing. Depends whether that is a nucleophile or not. This is not a nucleophile, so we just add the two bromines. Water can be used as a nucleophile, though, so after you add the bromine, the OH does an SN2 and adds to the more substituted side. These will have to add anti to each other. Remember again, anti-addition happens when you have the halogen as one of your reagents, and it's going to be Markovnikov. So the OH is the more electronegative. It's going to end up on the more substituted carbon. So if you're just looking on your scratch paper, you'd say, okay, I'm going to add a bromine here and OH here, and that would give me this product. And the OH happens to have added to a carbon here to generate a chiral center. Starting material is, of course, a chiral. So we're going to have a racemic mixture. And the squiggly line, again, tells you I don't know whether it's pointing forward or backward. I'll get a mixture of the two. Continuing to work around this circle here, you see we have HBr. Well, that's a strong acid. And we already analyzed one situation where we had a strong acid. We said, okay, we made this carbocation first, the secondary one. It rearranged by moving one of these methyl groups over to that carbon. That allowed the methyl group to be there, leave two methyl groups on that carbon. Now that carbon was positive. In this case, we add the OH there. In this new case, our nucleophile is the Br minus. So the Br will end up on the other side. So our product is actually going to look like this. The final reaction working around this wheel is this reaction. As soon as you see that mercury, I hope you'll recognize this as an oxymercuration demercuration reaction where the OH is added to the more substituted side. Second step, the H adds here. This doesn't have a strong acid. You don't get a carbocation. You don't have to worry about any of that. Again, we generate a chiral center, so we have a racemic mixture.